done. You guys have always are, have had a lot of success in, in play action. Um, wondering if you could talk about what has to happen, kind of at all levels, in order for, in order for a play action to be really successful. Aside from having a Derrick Henry. Yeah, I believe that uh, you know, regardless of what the scheme is, it takes all eleven for us to be successful, and that couldn't be more true in play action than anywhere else. And we need good pad level by the offensive line so that it sells run to the backers. And we need good protection, obviously, inside out, good fake from the back. Uh, I think Ryan does a great job at seeding the football, making it look like a real exchange. And of course, you got to go win on your routes, you know. So uh, there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, you got to make it, you know, married to whatever your formations are in the run game as well. Otherwise, it doesn't look authentic. So. Uh, uh, pretty good at that with the uh, the, the fake situation, and I, I asked him this too. But if it's a really good fake, is his reward getting getting hit? Basically, <laughs> I, I think they're certainly keyed into him, you know. Uh, and I think we're always looking for ways to improve and areas we can improve our technique and our game. But I would say that's a fair assessment. If if uh, if he has a good fake, he's probably going to get thudded up. How much has the quality of AJ's routes maybe enhanced your play action the last couple of games? Yeah, he's such a strong route runner, right? So he can work through contact. He can work over the middle of the field, uh, you know, and not be phased by reroutes and things like that. And so uh, AJ's been working very, very hard uh, for his game to kind of hit its stride. And uh, I've been happy for him that it has in the last couple of weeks. Is the way that he just kind of like accelerates through the catch, is that something that you feel is unique and, and, and makes him such a good yards after catch receiver? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just Looking back over the course of my career, the guys that have produced with the ball in their hands are very confident in catching it out in front of their body and accelerating through the catch, like you said. You know, that gives them the momentum to break arm tackles or, or to fight through that contact at the catch point. Uh, and AJ works very hard to do that. So that's certainly an attribute that I, I think, you know, uh, helps his success. One, one thing maybe we haven't seen as much from AJ this year is the the yards after catch is that uh, anything in particular you think on that or is it just a matter of getting to, to full health and so forth yeah I think you know it, it shots on goal a little bit too right you know we talked about this a couple weeks ago in the run game you know we were close to popping one in the run game and we're fortunate enough to get out against Buffalo and, and have a nice long run there and I think that the same holds true for AJ with these play passes you know he's uh, you know certainly working hard at it and, and I you know I feel like that success will come but how long do you do your work on plays like the, the goal line pass by Derek? Uh, how many weeks in advance and how much energy and juice does it give you when some, something like that hits? Yeah, we joke around a little bit and say sometimes they need to marinate. You know, that one's not done marinating. Uh, and so it can vary. You know, it depends on the on the play. But uh, obviously, you know, that that's a play that we've repped in the past and, you know, just done different versions of it. And so uh, we felt comfortable with Derek's decision-making ability and, and uh, you know, his ability to get the ball up and down quickly without, you know, de demanding too much of the route. So. Guys lobby to make a pass or, or lobby to do certain things with it? How much, do you, how much of that goes in one ear and out the other? Yeah, you, you have to take it all with a grain of salt. Everybody seems to be a former high school quarterback, you know, so it's uh, it's definitely, you know, I, I got to see it with my own eyes to to believe it. But uh, no, those guys, those guys all do a great job when we ask them to do some of those kind of special gadget type plays. And so it, it's fun to watch, you know, that marination process uh, take hold. How much does, it, you know, those those crossing routes that AJ runs so often, how much do those set up, you know, the occasional, like the, like the 41-yard pass he had down the sidelines there? How, you know, how does one lead to the other? Yeah, I think you need a good balance, right? It can't just all be in the same area. That's, uh, you know, easier for defenses to, to try to get defenders in those spots if you have too big a tendency there. But, um, you know, obviously the commitment we have to our run game here and getting defenders to load the box, we're going to have to, uh, win some one-on-ones when we're afforded the opportunity to do so. I thought that was an incredible throw by Ryan and a, and a great uh, catch by AJ, you know, and, and I think that, uh, you know, it's just a, an example of those two kind of building that chemistry and connection and, and uh, getting back on the same page. With your play design, do you kind of at this point just stick to what you've already put together that's in the book, or do you ever, like, see something and say, hey, you know what, we got to incorporate that into something else that, that we're doing? Yeah, it's always a blend. You try to fit it in your own verbiage or, or terminology, you know. But um, certainly, there there are new ideas that come up or adjustments, counter punches off of things that we've done. I think that's any offensive system. You know, you have kind of an evolution as the year goes on, uh, adding little wrinkles here and there. 
Um, but ultimately, you want your game plan to be founded on your bread and butter stuff, you know, the things that you have a lot of reps on in training camp and that we've logged and banked reps on over the last couple of years. So, uh, you know, I think it's an ongoing process, but, you know, there's certainly tweaks and adjustments that go into it. I've seen in the past where coaches would, would take things from different plays and layer it all into one. Is that something that, that, that you've ever considered? Like, hey, this part of this play was good. Let's pull this part and then just put it all together into a new one. Yeah, it could certainly be something based on maybe coverage in a pass game would be an example, right? They're, they play two high zone or they play single high zone. So you want to build a single high answer on one side and two high answer on the other, something like that. So you definitely will, will blend um, concepts at, at times, you know. But again, I think that depends on the opponent and it depends on what you're trying to get accomplished offensively. Hey, uh, you know, Coach Steckel, I need you to watch these style plays. Coach Moore, you watch this one, and they come back to you and you come together. And you know, it's more each guy has their own uh, kind of section of the game plan that they, they give the, the preview, you know, and if something comes up within that situation or within that uh, chunk of the game plan, you know, they, they, uh, they'll bring that idea to my attention. It's a very collaborative staff. I mean, I, I have conversations all the time with Coach Vrabel, you know, all the way down to you know some of our quality control coaches and assistants. Everybody has a voice, and we you know we try to uh, do what's best for the offense uh, each Sunday. Yeah, I I think they've always been a very sound and disciplined unit. I think they play very hard. Clearly, they make an emphasis on turnovers and taking the ball off the offense. Um, you know, and so that's no surprise to me. They've. Maybe have had a little bit better results, but uh, you know I haven't seen much of a change in who they are or what their identity is. I, I have a lot of respect for this unit. Well, you your back the past couple of games, what have you liked out of what you've seen from him, and what do you feel like he can get to with so many games left in the season? Sorry, could you repeat that one more time? <laughs> 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 um, Cars, he's making duck calls over there. All the time. <laughs> with Julio back, more healthy now. What have you liked out of the past couple of games from him? Yeah, you know, I think you just see his professionalism, right? Like he he understands how to run certain routes. He understands uh, how to diagnose different defenses. Notice whether it's too high or one high. You just you kind of see that veteran presence come out a little bit. You know, it's less having to review a bunch of things with him and more just letting him know what we're trying to accomplish with the concept and then and then let him get after it. So. Plays, I guess it makes it easier because playing a team a second time, I think you're so familiar with them. But in a lot of ways, is it tougher too? Is it tough to fool them and they kind of know what, you, what you're about as well? Yeah, I think there's a balance there, right? You don't want to overthink it. You don't want to uh, go too far and say, well, they're going to be ready for this, so we got to jerk the wheel and, and go do this. You know, I, I think ultimately we try to make each game plan have a bunch of sound answers for their base looks and then have rules that are tested enough to be able to handle the change-ups they throw at us. You know, and if we can accomplish that, then it, it keeps you from, like I said, jerking the wheel or making a drastic reaction to something you see on tape. Have you seen some Jim Brown clips uh, over the years, some of the old-time footage of Jim Brown? Oh, yeah. I, 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 love, uh, I love NFL history, and certainly an early part of my career did a lot of the NFL films uh, studies. Uh, we see every now and then a, a, a Derrick Henry to Jim Brown comparison. It seems like there's been a few recently. Do you do you see that? Uh, you, you know better than to try to bait me into a comparison. <laughs> I I, uh, I think someday people are going to be looking back at Derrick Henry highlights uh, with the same type of reverence.